This case takes place in the United States of America on the 5th of June 2009. Heather Snively was a 21 year old woman who lived in Beaverton, Oregon. She and her fiance had recently moved to the area and the couple were looking forward to a fresh start and they were expecting a baby boy. Heather was around eight months pregnant and those who knew her stated that she was incredibly excited about becoming a mother and spent much of her time researching and purchasing various items that the couple would need. They even had a name ready, John Stephen. She would also spend some time speaking to new and experienced mothers online. With somewhat of a tight budget, Heather was looking for anyone who was selling cheap secondhand clothing for her child. One of the people Heather began speaking to was a 27 year old woman named Karina Roberts. Karina was a mother of two, both of her children were under the age of 10 and were to different previous partners. For the last five years, Karina had a new boyfriend and the two wanted to have children of their own. But in 2007, Karina had a miscarriage. Following this miscarriage, Karina was worried that her current boyfriend may leave her if she couldn't get pregnant again. So, Karina lied. She told her boyfriend that she was pregnant with twins. Karina went through great lengths to convince those around her that she was pregnant. She began taking baby vitamins, gained weight, and began taking baby classes. Those who knew Karina stated that she seemed to be obsessed with babies, repeatedly watching videos of births on YouTube, sewing baby clothes, and telling people that she was pregnant. But Karina had devised a sinister plan. She aimed to lure an unsuspecting mother-to-be to her home and steal their baby. After speaking online and on the phone, both Heather and Karina met up a couple of times and kept in communication. Karina's neighbours would later say that they often saw the two walking together. Since Heather had just recently moved to the area, she was pleased to have met someone who was also sharing the same journey as her. On the 5th of June 2009, Heather told her fiancé that she was heading off to meet up with Karina. The two shared a kiss and said goodbye. Heather and Karina went shopping, and upon returning to Karina's home, Heather asked if she would be able to use her bathroom. Shortly after Heather entered the bathroom, Karina went and retrieved an extendable metal police baton. She then burst into the bathroom and began viciously attacking Heather. She struck her in the head over 15 times with the baton, and a violent struggle ensued as Heather fought back. But sadly, Heather was rendered unconscious. After this attack, she pulled out a razor blade and cut into Heather's abdomen, through her skin and into her womb. She then removed Heather's unborn baby. The blood loss resulted in Heather passing away, and the baby was stillborn. Karina rolled Heather's body up in a carpet and hid her in the crawl space underneath the kitchen, but she kept the baby with her. With Heather's body now hidden, Karina made a call to her boyfriend and told him to come back as soon as possible. Her boyfriend arrived back at the home to find Karina in the bathtub covered in blood with blood all over the bathroom. He looked at what Karina was holding in her arms as she cried hysterically to see the body of what he believed to be his child. He took the baby and began performing CPR and called the emergency services. Paramedics quickly arrived on the scene and took Karina and the child to hospital. The baby was pronounced dead shortly after arrival and Karina was given medical treatment, as of course, they believed that she had just given birth at home. The doctors were baffled. She had told her boyfriend that she was expecting twins and her boyfriend had relayed this information to the paramedics, telling them that only one baby had been born and that another must still be inside. However, when tests were conducted, they couldn't detect anything. They not only realized that there was no second baby, but also that Karina hadn't even given birth. The medical staff were deeply disturbed. They wondered who the baby belonged to. Realizing that a fetal abduction case was now a possible explanation, the staff made a call to the police. When the police arrived, they questioned Karina, but she was adamant that she had given birth despite all of the evidence to suggest otherwise. At some point, Karina confided in her boyfriend and told him the truth. She said, I did a horrible thing and said that a body was hidden in the crawl space of their home. 
Upon hearing this disturbing news, he went and spoke with the police and relayed this information to them. The police then searched Karina's home and found an unusual amount of blood in the bathroom. It wasn't consistent with a typical birth. There were blood spatters and signs of a struggle. As they searched further into the home, they looked into the crawl space of the kitchen. There, they found Heather's body in a horrific state. It was clear that her abdomen had been cut into. Evidence was collected, Karina was arrested, and Heather's body was taken away and an autopsy was conducted. The autopsy showed that Heather had been struck in the head 15 to 30 times by a police baton that was recovered from the crime scene, mostly to the back of her head. There were cuts to her right breast and of course her abdomen. It was concluded that the head injuries had knocked Heather unconscious and the cuts to her abdomen and subsequent blood loss killed her. Heather also had bite marks to the back of her elbow and a considerable amount of Karina's hair in her hands. It seemed that despite Karina having a weapon and the element of surprise, Heather put up quite the fight. Karina had a 5 inch scratch on the left side of her neck and visible injuries on her arms. A post-mortem was also conducted on Heather's child, John Stephen. It was found that he never took a breath after being removed from the womb. As the doctors further examined Karina's body, they also discovered that she wasn't even capable of having children. It turned out that shortly after having her second child, she had her tubes tied. The miscarriage she told her husband she had was a total fabrication. She had lied to him about being pregnant in hopes that he wouldn't leave her. She had concocted this twisted plan for the same reason. She hoped to steal someone else's baby and pass off the child as her own at whatever the cost. Investigators looked into Karina's internet history and the various chat sites that she frequented. As well as Heather, they discovered that she had been in contact with a number of other pregnant women. She had even set up meetings with them, but for whatever reason, these meetings didn't go ahead. It became very apparent to investigators that the crime was incredibly premeditated. She had searched for some time for a woman like Heather and was able to take advantage of her trusting nature. Strangely enough, those who knew Karina were shocked to hear about the crime and stated that she didn't seem like the type of person to do such a thing. One neighbor said, You get the impression that whoever did this must be crazy, but this woman didn't seem crazy on the surface. Karina was charged with murder and first degree robbery. Because their child, John Stephen, had not taken a breath, they couldn't charge Karina with double homicide. They instead could only charge her with robbery, as she had taken the baby. Karina had also been taken for a psychological evaluation, and a psychologist found no psychosis or any other mental disorders. The trial was supposed to take place in November of 2010. However, a plea deal was granted. The defense had argued that the aggravated murder charges were based on the attempted kidnapping theory. They claimed that this wasn't applicable because the infant was unborn and had not drawn a breath after being pulled from the womb and therefore they could not be a quote living human being so kidnapping would not apply. If the baby had taken a breath the situation would have been different. Although it's highly likely that their child would have survived if not for what Karina had done. Following this claim, negotiations began between the defense and prosecution. The initial proposal from the defense would have allowed for parole later on, which prosecutors did not find acceptable at all, so was rejected. The prosecutor would later say, I wasn't going to go to the family with anything less than life without parole, and eventually a plea deal was agreed upon. It's reported that Karina sobbed through most of the proceeding and only replied to the questions with one word replies. When asked if she was pleading guilty, Karina said, I'm taking responsibility because I am guilty. Karina was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Her plea means she won't face trial, won't be able to appeal her sentence and she avoided the death sentence. When addressing Karina, Heather's father said, you took my daughter. My life is never going to be the same. You've messed up our whole family. My mum and dad have one less grandchild, and I hope you never forget that.
An incredibly tragic part of this case I read about was that shortly before being killed, Heather had sent a card to her grandparents. The card was posted on the 5th of June 2009, the same day she was killed. The card arrived three days later, after her grandparents were told the tragic news. This card read, Can you believe mum and dad are going to be grandparents?